By the strength of his faith, Muhammad Ali Jinnah had made the dream of Pakistan into a reality and will ever be remembered as the father of his people. This is Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the man who led the movement to create Pakistan. Revered as the qaid e azam the great leader, the first governor general of Pakistan looms large in the national psyche. His portrait adorns the walls of state offices and is printed on every Pakistani banknote. Jinnah is a thread that weaves Pakistan together. From Jinnah House, Jinnah Road, Jinnah Bagh, Jinnah Airport, to the Jinnah Antarctic Station, simply attaching his name to something immediately burnishes its importance and legitimacy. In a country where so many things are named after Jinnah, is it not ironic that the location of Jinnah's place of birth is still cause for controversy? While school textbooks may present Pakistan's history as sacrosanct, with Jinnah's biography etched in stone, the truth is that we still don't know for sure where Jinnah was born. In this video, we showcase three different sites in Sin that are commonly associated with Jinnah to answer the question of his birthplace. Join us as we unravel the mystery surrounding the birthplace of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founding father of Pakistan. Soch explains the mystery of Jinnah's birthplace. The outsized importance the name Jinnah bestows on a property leads us to wonder, what is Jinnah's relationships to the many properties that carry his name? In some cases, the story seems to be straightforward. Take, for example, the Jinnah House Museum in Karachi. Also known as the Flagstaff House, this elegant mansion with its extensive grounds is situated on Fatma Jinnah Road, very close to Frere Hall. It was constructed in the 1890s by Moses Somek, the architect behind iconic Karachi buildings such as the BVS High School. Jinnah purchased this property in 1944 from then mayor of Karachi, Sohrab Kavazji, for a sum of rupees 1,15,000. This transaction coincided with the 31st session of the Muslim League. Jinnah was looking for a property suitable to establish a base in the city, then the capital of a province that would form an integral part of any future Muslim state in India. By the time of partition, Jinnah had spent the majority of his adult life practicing law in Bombay, the city where he built his massive South Court mansion. As Jinnah's political stature grew, he increasingly found himself dividing his time between Bombay and New Delhi, with Jinnah purchasing a house on Aurangzeb Road, Delhi, in 1938. In a way, Jinnah's purchase of Flagstaff House demonstrated his coming full circle back to Karachi, the city of his childhood. After the creation of Pakistan in 1947, Jinnah moved his possessions into Flagstaff House from his houses in Delhi and Bombay. However, he spent little time actually living in it, owing to his immediate move to the Governor General's house just down the road. After Jinnah's death in September 1948, his sister Fatma Jinnah lived there until she relocated to Mahatta Palace in 1964. Interestingly, despite the association of Mahatta Palace with the country's founder in public imagination, the Qaid never lived in or owned the palace. Upon its owner, Said Shivrat and Mahatta's migration to Bombay, the building was acquired by the government and hosted the country's foreign ministry. When the foreign ministry shifted to the newly built capital of Islamabad, the palace was given to Fatma Jinnah as a replacement for Mr. Jinnah's mansion in Bombay. When Fatma Jinnah passed away in 1967, it was unclear what would happen with her sizable estate, given that she had never married and thus left no natural heirs. Eventually, a court-approved succession certificate transferred her property to her younger sister, Shirin Jinnah, who went on to take up residence in Mahatta Palace. Today, the palace is open to the public as a museum and cultural center, managed by an independent board of trustees. It has also been the subject of complex litigation ever since the death of Fatma Jinnah, with a recent ruling by the High Court ordering the museum's conversion into a medical college. Shiri Jinnah passed away in 1980, and Flagstaff House was transferred to a reconstituted qaid azam Trust, chaired by Muhammad Ali Jinnah's grand-nephew, Liaquat Merchant. In 1985, the Pakistani government finalized its purchase of Flagstaff House from the qaid azam Trust to preserve it as a monument to Jinnah that is open to the public. Refurbished into a museum, the qaid azam House was officially inaugurated in 1993 by then-governor of Sindh, Hakim Muhammad Said. Ironically, it is now highly securitized due to its proximity to sensitive government buildings. So while nobody disputes that Jinnah owned Flagstaff House, things get a little more contentious when it comes to Jinnah's birthplace. 
So where was the founder of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, born? This is Wazir Mansion, a handsome two-story home in the old Karachi quarter of Karadar. According to the official narrative, this residence was constructed between 1860 and 1880 by Seth Govardhan Das, a prosperous Hindu merchant who had journeyed to Karachi from distant Rajasthan. In the mid-1870s, Jinnah's parents, Jinnah Punja and Mitti Bai, are said to have rented the mansion's breezy second-floor apartment after relocating from their village in Katiawar, Gujarat. In her memoirs, Madre Millet, Fatma Jinnah recounts that the future father of the nation was born here in 1876. Two of Jinnah's biographers, Hector Bolitho and Stanley Wolpert, also agree that Jinnah's birthplace was in a two-story house on Karadar's Newnham Road, while Wolpert goes further and specifically names Vizier Mansion. In the 1950s, Vizier Mansion was purchased from its owner at the time, Ali Vizier, after whom the building is named, to be preserved as a national monument and public museum. Ultimately, while there is little doubt that the Qaid did spend the majority of his childhood in the building, this does not mean that he was necessarily born there. Now this is where the debate begins. Some historians hold that according to contemporaneous records, Vizier Mansion was not built until at least 1880, a full four years after the official birth date of the Qaid. According to a July 2022 article by Akil Abbas Jafri, a columnist and chief editor of the Urdu Dictionary Board, the land on which Vizier Mansion now stands was first acquired from the Karachi municipality by a man named Umar. After combining several plots into one large parcel, Plot 14, in 1866, Umar pledged this land as collateral to the merchant Abdul Rahim Chagla. Eventually, Umar failed to repay his debts of over 2,500 rupees and the property was put up for sale. The buyer of Plot 14 then mortgaged the land to Jinnah Bhai, Nathya Bhai and Company, the trading firm of Muhammad Ali Jinnah's father and two uncles. Interestingly, this debtor also defaulted and ownership of the plot was transferred to Jinnah Bhai Punja. At this point in time, Jinnah Punja was living on the first floor of a small house on that same plot, one that he rented together with Jinnah's grandfather, who occupied the ground floor. It is at this site that a six-story building, Ali Plaza, stands today. Vizir Mansion itself was constructed by Jinnah Bhai Punja in 1880 after his family took ownership of Plot 14 and the family all moved into it upon its completion. So while Fatma Jinnah may have thought her elder brother was born in the house they grew up in, it is possible that he was, in fact, born in the house next door. A third narrative of Jinnah's birth only complicates things further. On the banks of the Indus River, over 150 kilometers from Karachi, is the small town of Chirk. Then a major trading post, Chirk had been chosen by British General Charles Napier as the first capital of Sindh after their takeover in 1843 and hosted the region's oldest colonial school. Jinnah's maternal grandfather, Musa Valibhai, prominent member of the Ismaili community, maintained a residence in Chirk to be near his Hazar Imam, the first Awa Khan, who had settled in the town after fleeing Afghanistan in the 1840s. While the site doesn't bear any signs of official recognition of this information, Locals such as Mushtaq Mullah, chairman of Qaeda Azam Yadgar Committee Jerk, stand firm in their historical traditions. This is the Qaeda Azam Yadgar Committee of 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 Qaeda Azam Yadgar According to local lore, Jinnah was born in Chirk in 1876 in his maternal grandfather's house. This version of history is also supported by several history textbooks taught in Sindh in the 1950s and 60s. The Al Khan's palace, Spartan apart from its intricate woodwork, was built in 1843 and stands just steps away from the site of Jinnah's reported home. Indeed, according to the people of Chirk, the Yal Khan took a special interest in Jinnah's early upbringing, even giving him his name, Muhammad Ali. So how do we reconcile the presented information about multiple birthplaces when in fact Jinnah himself stated he was born in Karachi during his October 1938 address? Ushtaq Mullah argues that there may have been a misunderstanding. 
At the time of Jinnah's birth, Jhirk was a part of Karachi district under the colonial administrative system, and so Jinnah might have just been substituting the name of the district for the small town in which he was born. However, other experts, such as former Sindh Culture, Tourism and Antiquities Department secretary and archaeologist Dr. Kalimullah Lashari, dismissed the idea of Jinnah being born in Chirk, pointing to the lack of any Jinnah family connections to Chirk in historical records. The question of where exactly Jinnah was born speaks to larger debates about Pakistani national identity and history. Some argue that pinpointing the exact location of Jinnah's birthplace is unimportant. However, Others contend that identifying and preserving the site of Jinnah's birthplace is vital to honoring Pakistan's history. Each possible birthplace ties Jinnah to competing narratives of his position within the Pakistani mosaic. Gujaratis, Ismailis, and Sindhis all claim him as one of their own, while heritage conservationists of all stripes argue that preserving these sites is a way of nurturing inclusive and diverse visions of Pakistani identity. Debates over Jinnah's birthplace mirror deeper contests over Pakistani nationalism. Should it be secular or Islamic, federalized or centralized? Perhaps the power of Jinnah's origins lies not in the physical building itself, but in their impact on Pakistani's relationships with the country that he founded.